Hi, welcome to episode 119 of The Corner of Knit and Tea. It is Sunday, January 8th. My name is Laura. I'm also known as Fluffy K on Ravelry, Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter. I blog over at the corner of knitandtea.com, which is where this episode and every episode show notes will be. I have an Etsy shop called The Corner of Knit and Tea, where I sell my hand spun yarns and a few mug cozies and tumblers. Um, and we have a Ravelry group called The Corner of Knit and Tea. Hi, how are you? I hope that you have had a wonderful week. It has been not quite a week since we talked. Um, I did go back to work on Tuesday and we got the ball rolling for some New Year's things. So um, my job is very cyclical. I have all kinds of things to do now that it is the new year. Um, so things have been busy. Um, if I'm a little out of sorts today, it's because I'm trying uh, recording in sort of a new setup. I did uh, put a little post on Instagram about it. I uh, received some camera lights over the holidays, so I have um, a kind of an umbrella light off to this corner, um, which will hopefully uh, result in better light for the podcast and better colors to show you. Uh, I am using the new camera, as you can tell. Um, and previously what I used to do is I used to record with um, a TV tray table right in front of me and my laptop right there. So I have nothing in front of me anymore, which is really odd in this room. Um, I did put a shawl over the backdrop, which you can't really see. It is my girasol by, um, or girasol by uh, Jared Flood. I just thought it would add some interest and I wasn't sure exactly how things were going to play out. Now actually it do it's not very much above my head, so I will probably remove it for next time. And now you can see the table on which I lay everything next to me. So it will be kind of an interesting episode. Like I said, I'm feeling a wee bit out of sorts but um, hopefully it will work out and be fine. I have some crafty things to show you today and I can talk about a few things um, and that's about it. I mean, it has been a little bit shorter since I saw you last. Um, I did meet up with Liz and unfortunately um, there is not going to be an episode with Liz this, uh, this time around. She uh, came into town for Christmas and New Year's and she actually is leaving today. And unfortunately, because of the way the weekends fell and the fact that I had family all of those weekends, I didn't get to take a trip up to see her um, so that we could record. She did actually drive down midweek and um, we spent the afternoon together on Wednesday and then she came to our knit night. Um, but unfortunately, we were sort of out and about and so there really wasn't an opportunity to record. I know that a lot of you have said those are your favorite episodes um, and I'm really sorry not to have gotten to um, do an episode with Liz this time around. Hopefully she will be back uh, sometime before next year's Christmas um, and we can try and record an episode together again uh, because I definitely did miss doing one. Um, but since I saw her, she and I um, had sort of our annual Christmas tea exchange and she brought me some lovely goodies from Tea Time Scottsdale, one of which I am drinking today. Um, today I am drinking Tea Time Scottsdale cinnamon apple coffee cake. Let's see if I can, there we go. That's not too bad. I also have to figure out how to show things close up to the um, camera now. Um, this has black tea, organic cinnamon chips, apple pieces, and orange blossoms. And um, I am drinking it today in my National World War uh, I Museum, which is here in Kansas City, in the Poppies mug, um, which celebrated the uh, centennial. Um, and they are celebrating the sort of four-year centennial from um, because World War I was 1914 to 1918. So they are celebrating 2014 to 2018. Um, so that is apple cinnamon coffee cake. Ooh, and that is absolutely delicious. It totally tastes like apples and cinnamon. Mm. And they added a little bit of sweet to it and it totally tastes like apple cinnamon coffee cake. So thank you, Liz, if you're here with us in spirit. Um, and I have some other lovely teas to try in the coming weeks. Um, and I really need to just go ahead and place an order with Tea Time Scottsdale because I have had a variety of their teas through Liz um, and they're all delicious. So um, look for reviews of the different teas that she brought me coming up on the blog. Um, and there will also be a link to this one on the blog today. So let's talk about what I've been knitting. 
I got a wild hair this week um, that I wanted to cast on for the Pussy Hat Project. Uh, the Pussy Hat Project is uh, a, the pattern itself was written by Cat Coil. And um, the idea is to knit a bunch of pink cat hats um, for women to wear in the March on Washington, which will be taking place the day after the inauguration, so the 21st of January. There are a variety of marches happening all over the country. I know local to here. Um, there is a march in Topeka. Um, and the main focus of the march is uh, for women's rights and um, to, to sort of uh, protest a lot of what has come out of the election um, that has been negative towards women. And I don't want to get too political here, but that is something that's happening. And I, um, even though I am not able to go to the marches, I sort of thought that I might want to knit a hat in solidarity. And I actually had a previous hat that I knit a couple years ago. It was a test knit and it was far too big for my head and it was in this bright obnoxious pink. So I ripped it out and this week I knit my own version of the pussy hat. Like I said, the pattern is by Cat Coil. It is free on Ravelry. Um, I made a few modifications in that uh, the pattern itself is knit flat and I knit it in the round. And I added um, an extra couple inches of ribbing so that I could um, kind of fold it up. And um, this was out of Cascade 220 and I believe it is in deep pink. Um, and I will go ahead and demonstrate. One wears it thusly and you have almost like little cat ears. So that is my pussy hat um, for the rally. I'll be taking pictures later today. Um, and like I said, um, the campaign actually uh, says that you can mail them off and donate them. Um, and I haven't decided whether I'm going to mail this one off or keep it so that I can sort of wear it in solidarity. Um, but that is my pussy hat finished. So now my hair's all crazy. Um, but that is the one finished object of the week. The um, getting close to finished, but not quite there, are my Christmas Eve cast on socks, which are my gingerbread socks. I finished the first one, um, I believe on either Wednesday, I finished it Wednesday night at midnight. And this is the gingerbread house colorway. It is by Jinx Yarns. It is on her sport weight sock. And then I got a uh, contrasting skein with a little bit of her baby pink so that I could do the cuff and the heel. Um, I chose not to do the toe that way. I chose to just keep going. Um, this is my standard vanilla sock pattern. Since it is a sport weight yarn, I used 54 stitches on a US one, which is a 2.25 millimeter. Um, knit until I felt like it was time for a heel, knit until I felt like it was time for a toe. That's kind of the way it goes. And I did a, uh, it is a slipped stitch heel flap with a gusset. And um, the last two nights I have been um, very involved, well, Friday and Saturday, yeah, I have been very um, uh, drawn into a book that I'm reading. And the nice thing um, about reading, at least for me, or um, I have been knitting so long that as long as um, it is roundy roundy with no shaping, I can knit while I read. So the first night I did the cuff um, and then uh, the leg. And then last night I worked the heel and started to work the gusset. And I do believe um, maybe today, I guess probably not today because I have some other things I'm working on, but um, in the next lunch or two, I should have the second sock complete. And then that will be my first sock complete, pair of socks complete for the year. Um, because I did not use a pattern, this will not be good. And, and because I cast on before the year started, this will not be good for the use your books knit along. Um, but, uh, my next pair I think will be, um, and I decided, I think I'm probably going to join Volenwein's box of socks this year, mostly because I want to knit 12 pairs of socks. Um, and these will be my Christmas socks all done and ready to go. So that is, um, like I said, my gingerbread house socks. So that is a work in progress. The next work in progress is something that I cast on this week and I have been telling you about for a while now. Um, this one actually will not be a use your books knit along either, um, but it is a pattern that I previously owned and previously tried. This is the Faro, F-A-R-O or Faro, I don't know how it's pronounced, Pullover by Amy Christophers. And um, this is a sweater that I tried to knit previously in Jill Draper Empire, that was probably six months or a year ago, and it was definitely the wrong yarn for uh, the process. I really needed something that was a little bit more um, 
woolen spun rather than worsted and a little bit stretchier and airy and light. And um, I found the, um, it turns out this is not exactly the yarn that the sample was knit in, but it is similar. Um, this is Green Mountain Spinnery. Ooh, I really like the way the colors are coming out on here. I do think that this camera setup is going to be better. This is Green Mountain Spinnery Weekend Wool. It is an Aran weight. Um, it is, I believe, a two-ply woolen, uh, woolen spun, um, so it is lofty and airy. Um, and it is uh, in the colorway teal, and I have six skeins of this. And um, the Faro Pullover is um, a sort of lacy sweater um, that is knit from cuff to cuff. So um, without giving too much away, because it does say that uh, even in the description for the pattern, you start at the cuff, you work through the sleeve, you add stitches for the body, you work the body and neck treatment, and then you work on the second sleeve and you're done. Well, I guess there's a, there's a band around the, um, the hem around the waist, I believe maybe gets added afterwards. But um, so I started this uh, yesterday and got fairly far. As you can see, it is, um, it's got some cables, it's got a little bit of lace, um, it's got some interesting stitches to work up kind of very textured. Um, this is something that I cannot um, work on probably on my lunch hour, well maybe on my lunch hour, but it involves charts and I do kind of have to follow the charts even though I'm kind of in the rhythm now. Um, so my guess is this will probably be a home knit, but um, I got a good probably four or five inches done yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably five inches. Um, so I am enjoying that and um, maybe I'll even finish that by the end of the month. I don't know, um, but that would be kind of fun. So that is the Faro Pullover. It is the next sweater that I'm working on and it is a Rhinebeck sweater quantity. So I am using Stash. So other projects coming up. I'm hoping to finish my gingerbread socks this week so that I can cast on for the Valentine's Day socks for the babies. Um, and then the other fun thing that happened uh, yesterday, actually, is my husband and I went out to dinner and he said, um, I have something that you could knit for me if you wanted to. <laughs> and my husband almost never asks me to knit for him. Um, and of course, I really would like to knit for him, uh, but I don't want to knit him anything that he won't use. Um, but he has been uh, working on running still. He has decided he is going to run a variety of half marathons in the spring. Um, so he is still working on running and it has been super, super cold out. He got a bunch of cold weather gear um, to run in. However, um, and he has some earmuffs, but um, he's been using earbuds so that he can, um, they're Bluetooth earbuds so that he can uh, listen to uh, music while he runs. Plus he has his um, sunglasses because it's bright out. It's particularly bright out with the snow and everything. Um, and so he has been kind of trying to juggle a hat and earmuffs and his glasses and everything and he said it's really kind of uncomfortable. So he asked me yesterday for a hat um, that had a super extra long brim so that he could double it up over the ear section. Um, so I asked him what color he wanted and he said well all of my other running gear is kind of a fluorescent yellow. Could it be that color? And I thought about it and was like, of course it could be that color. So I came home yesterday and ordered a skein of Madeline Tosh DK in the Edison bulb colorway. Um, and those of you who know what I'm talking about know it is the absolute craziest neon yellowy green. Um, and I never thought I would ever knit anything in it because it is far too bright for me. Um, but I'm going to knit him probably just a basic beanie with ribbing um, and then have extra ribbing on the brim. So um, add an, an extra two, three inches so he can, um, like I said, double it up over his ears. So that will be on the short term horizon as well because it is super cold out and I would like to knit that for him so he can use it. So the other thing some of you may have seen on my Instagram is yesterday um, I sort of took back the craft room. We sort of cleaned it up after the guests had been here and I went through my stash um, looking for colors for a find my fade. And I didn't bring them over here. They're actually sitting um, over on the floor over there on kind of a tray that I photographed them on yesterday. Um, you can check out my Instagram account, that's Fluffy Kira. And I posted a photo yesterday of the six skeins that I found um, that I think I'm going to use to do a Find My Fade shawl. Um, mostly that was just aspirational uh, because I definitely, I have three or four things that I absolutely must get done this month. 
um, the Valentine's Day socks, I have a gift for a friend, um, and so I have a few things that I just have to get done before I can cast on a shawl, um, but I think that is going to be the next shawl that I cast on, and I just keep staring at it and loving it. So, um, and I'm really excited because um, all six skeins are by six different dyers, and um, so it means that I'm going to have a whole variety of things uh, to work with. So I will bring that maybe next week and show you all of those skeins and talk about all of those different dyers. And um, it's just really exciting to me to be able to pull things out of the stash, especially things that I have been using um, for a while, or things that I have been in the stash for a while. So I think that wraps up knitting. I will mention that we uh, have kicked off the Selfish Craft Along in uh, my group. Basically, uh, following up on the gift along where everything you had to knit was for gifts. Now I'm asking you to knit something for yourself that brings you joy. This month for me, it is definitely um, finishing up my gingerbread socks, uh, knitting a sweater for myself out of that sweater quantity that I bought at Rhinebeck. And if I manage to start my Find My Fade shawl, um, that will be one of them as well. Of course, I'm not eligible for prizes, so I'm just going to continue to work on my selfish knits. Uh, you are eligible for prizes uh, for every finished object that you finish this month that is something for yourself that has brought you some joy. Please post a picture in the finished objects thread and there will be prizes at the end of the month. So enjoy knitting for yourself and creating and I look forward to seeing your objects. Also, even if you don't finish anything this month, please come and join us in the chat thread uh, because it is just a wonderful time of year. It is kind of, like I said, in the Northern Hemisphere, it is kind of cold and bleak and um, perfect for sitting indoors and knitting and knitting something that is good for soothing to your soul um, and that brings you joy. So let's take a quick detour and talk about spinning. Or I guess it's not really a detour because that's part of the podcast anyway. Sip of tea and let's go to spinning. Last week I showed you a gorgeous braid from Hello Yarn. It was merino in the colorway Nimble. And I talked about how it had not been in stash very long, so I didn't really think it counted for uh, Willy Wonka fibers spinning from your stash in 2017. I have finished the singles. I didn't actually end up being able to start this until Tuesday of this week, so I haven't managed to finish it. It has purples and turquoise blues and some browns and some navy and some pink, and it is just super fun. I'm not sure the camera is showing uh, how lovely it is. Uh, I will be plying this this evening and this will be destined for the shop. So if this looks like your cup of tea, um, uh, it will be up probably midweek. That sort of depends on how well I can get things to photograph. Of course, now that I have my new lights, uh, I may be able to photograph more often in the winter days. So that is great. Um, for the second spin of the year, I have decided to go into my stash and this time I really pulled a braid from stash. This is um, a braid of Nerd Girl Yarns hand dyed fibers. Let's see if I can get that to show to you. Um, and she does lovely, lovely fibers and they're all around fandoms and all kinds of nerdy things. This is 100% Superwash Merino in the colorway Secret Spiders. That is a uh, Welcome to Night Vale reference. And it is all kinds of purples and lavenders and blacks. And I know that I bought this skein um, at the Knitting in the Heartland, which is the local conference, not this past year in 2016, but the previous one. So that means this is a braid from 2014 that has been sitting in my stash waiting to be loved. And I am super excited. This should be a wonderful one this week. Um, and this is also destined for the shop. So um, there you go. I haven't actually gone through and pulled out um, a bin of fibers to spin like I have in the past years. Um, in past years, I have done CTA Spin the Bin, um, and which is the crazy twisted and arbitrary group on Ravelry, and they encourage you to identify at least 12 fibers in your stash and spin them during the year. And you can choose to, if you uh, do not spin them, to uh, have consequences for that. They could be donated as prizes or given away or sold. Um, I have chosen not to participate this year because generally what I do um, 
or generally what I have been doing is each quarter I go into my stash and pull out a whole bunch of things I want to spin since I'm trying to spin a braid a week anyway and then I try and spin up all those things and then when the bin is empty I go back and get more. I decided to not try and decide exactly what I'm going to spin over the full course of the year and I really don't need prizes of more fiber because I am quite blessed and have quite a bit of fiber I need to spin down. So for this year, I'm just trying to pull braids that um, have been in the stash for a while. You'll see lots of that. Um, I'm hoping to pull out a few braids that I have been hoarding for myself. So I think once a month or once every other month, I'm going to try and spin a braid that I have been sort of saving in the stash for myself. Um, and I know exactly what the first of those braids is going to be when I get there. Um, but this week will be Nerd Girl Yarns in Secret Spiders. So that is what I'm going to be working on. I think that brings me to the end of the podcast. I hope you have had a wonderful week and are enjoying your new year. I know um, for many of us, times are a little bit trying right now um, with all the things that are happening politically in the United States. Um, but I really hope that you, uh, your new year is off to a good start. You have found some crafting mojo, um, some beautiful art to take your mind off of things. And um, I hope that you have a wonderful week. Until I see you next, I will say happy spinning. Happy. I'm just going to screw up my own tagline. It's fine. Happy knitting. Happy spinning. Happy sipping. And I'll see you next time. Bye.